Five Nights at Freddy's is nearly a decade old, and with the hundreds of thousands of fan games that have been released since, so many of them have been lost to time, forgotten, and left to rot. But this is Pop Goes, and since its first entry back in April of 2016, it has become a titan in the fan game niche, becoming one of the only five games to be a part of the prestigious Fazbear Fanverse initiative. And also... I'll be showing how the franchise has progressed from Freddy Fazbear but greasy to the best FNAF fan game ever made. This is the redemption of Pop Goes. Picture this, it's 2015 and FNAF 3 was just released. The internet has already torn it apart, decoding the secret messages and finally discovering the good ending. And the community loved it, but shortly after, Scott Cawthon posted this image. A hat, the original Freddy Fazbear hat. At the time, the community thought this was the end of the series. The hat had been put down for the last time, with the trilogy finally getting its conclusive ending. The hat did not last long, but this gave a small indie developer at the time an idea. This is Kane Carter, and while you might know him for other reasons, he is a 25 year old game developer based in the UK. And after he saw this image, he wondered about the future of the FNAF timeline. What if the hat was sold at an auction and somebody else took the reins of Fazbear Entertainment? So, 15 months later, after six programmers, an entire rewrite of the story and creating the definition of development hell, Kane announced the release dates, April 1st, 2016. This is Popco's Arcade, an interactive teaser for the first main game released on the 1st of April 2016 for an April Fool's joke. And oh man is this cool for a teaser. In this game, you're a customer at the Popco's Pizzeria, playing Weasel World, an RPG arcade game where you play as Popco's the Weasel. It's your mission to defeat King Cultivate and take back the garden through defeating enemies like Dumpty, a reference to one at Flumpties, and Chester from Five Nights at Candies. You start in um, grassland? Honestly, I don't know what to call these three main areas. This game's progression system is as basic as it gets. Find key, unlock area, defeat boss. Same with the combat system. Literally just attack or heal items which you can buy from the shop. Also, we're so close to 10,000 subscribers, so you know what to do. But when you defeat Dumpty in the second area, you will approach a crossroad. If you go up, the music begins to fade away with something being just out of view. Until... You can now collect a white key, and if you go back to the main area and use it on this door, you'll find this. And if you then head up to the wall here, you can just clip through it. Eventually, you'll find the FNAF 3 minigames, Mango's Quest, Balloon Boy's Air Adventure, and this. That is by far the most powerful jump scare in any FNAF fan game. You're so used to the confines of the arcade screen, you never really looked away from it. But suddenly, it's torn away from you and something violently reaches out. But if you take the other path, you're met with the final boss. And once you've gathered enough upgrades, you can finally face him. This guy really isn't too hard to beat. And once you defeat him, this happens. Oh, and by the way, this game kind of fucking sucks. <laughs> it's just a teaser game, so it's not meant to be some Cyberpunk 2077 of FNAF. Is this game worth it? Eh. But the pixel art is really rough in some areas, and there is no indication that these are interactable items. The gameplay is walking, that's like half the game, and the controls feel so clunky. It feels like a PowerPoint slide. Oh, this is a FNAF fan game? Oh yeah, right, um, finally released on the 26th of June 2016, this is Popcos. When going into your first night, you'll really quickly notice how it's a very unusual setup in contrast to the dark, dingy office of FNAF 1, because they're right 
lurking behind you, always watching. Yeah, the Popkins restaurant is like an internet cafe with multiple computers around you running Weaselware, an operating system specifically designed for controlling every function of the restaurant, from, and I quote, cameras, vents, printers, and even Popgoes himself. And since this game is set in 2024, not in 1987, the restaurant isn't run on three AAA batteries and has unlimited power. But to counter that, Kane added the panic meter. It's the only thing that can actually kill you. Whenever you make a mistake like shutting down the wrong room or heating up the incorrect vent, your panic meter will skyrocket, which can be countered by looking out the window. But how are you supposed to know when to look into the never-ending void? Well, through the phone calls. A lot of FNAF fan games fall down the trap of doing exposition dumps. An example of this is SCP The Endurance, where the entire first night is nothing but explaining the mechanics. Or Demitibus, but um, we don't talk about that one. In Pop Goes, the phone guy aka Fritz hints at the mechanics through natural speeches and sh** and Fazbear Frights. There's so much, like, personality to it. He also explains that right behind you is an office, which um, he is in. So why the f am I here? And on top of that, every animatronic has its own different way to be countered. During the first night, you're introduced to the weasel's mechanic. He'll attempt a 3D printed animatronic named Black Rabbit, and your mission is to disable whatever room he's in using your phone. On the second night, Sarah and Saffron the Squirrel become active. These pests make their way to you using the vents, and while they don't kill you, they do this. Also, I'm not sure if you noticed this guy yet. This is Stone the Crow. He's basically designed to block any animatronics out of view and give you ominous messages. On the third night, the last animatronic becomes active, Blake the Badger. At random times in the night, he goes to the server room and attempts to shut down your phone. But while he does this, the monitor on that camera will flash certain colors, and you have to click the correlating colors and then call Blake using this button here. Here. Yeah, it's kind of a lot of information, but don't worry because after each night, you'll be treated with an Atari-styled minigame. Yeah, okay, give the game some slack, it was like 2016. <laughs> also, these minigames fucking suck. They're confusing, and I didn't know where to go the majority of the time. You're supposed to be looking for toy animatronics by following set routes and then approaching them, which ends the minigame. Also, night 6. This night isn't really different than any other night, aside from the end. This is basically the bad ending. How do you get to the good ending? Did I tell you this game took place after FNAF 3? Well, if you find all the encounters of this guy in every night, you'll unlock a special minigame and this. You'll also unlock the extras menu, containing all the animatronic designs, concept art, early development photos, scrap concepts, and this guy. In summary, Pop Goes is a really solid fan game for being made in 2016. A lot of fan games like Fun and Candies have really not aged well, so to give it credit, it's actually held up really well, although the gameplay gets really repetitive after a while. Oh, and by the way, the entire game you're playing as a robot named Strings. What the f- Oh, not happy. Pop Goes Arcade 2. Released on the 8th of April 2016, this game is an interactive teaser to something that never really saw the light of day. You play as the owner of Fastbear's Frights, and a few days before the attraction's release, you decided to playtest on the arcade machines. Fastbear's World, The Phantom Scourge. The game opens up in the forest, and oh wow, the visuals and movement is just so much better than the original Pop Goes Arcade. Freddy tells you that things have been acting strange recently. The leaders of each area have caught some kind of virus. They think that it came from the puppet's realm, but no one is courageous enough to visit it. So, this is where you come in. In this game, you have to collect four masks to open the puppet realm and then defeat him. But I'm not gonna lie, these two Pop Goes Arcade games really fall into the trap of being the two most boring generic RPGs ever. Seriously, just reskin this game into any other franchise, it would not make a difference. Maybe the mask part would be a bit weird, but anyway. Arcade 2 is a massive step up from the first, with a ton of new items, and you don't walk like both your legs have nerve damage, but still, I'm not even gonna waste your time and go over this. Just basically, collect key, upgrade, beat boss, collect mask, do three times over, and defeat final boss with a sh gimmick that only serves to pad up runtime. 
Maybe the trivia questions are kind of cool, but when I played all of the Pop Goes games, and I mean all of them, this was the first one that I closed out of literal boredom. I know it's supposed to be an interactive teaser, but the only teaser here is ominous messages when you die, and spring trap jump scare if you find all the hidden cupcakes. Do the dab on the furry haters? Sure. Ah. After Pop Goes Arcade 2 was released, there was a three year gap before there were any new games. Why? Development hell. It's just a feature of Pop Goes at this point. But it didn't stop there because there is a ton of cancelled Pop Goes projects. Pop Goes 2, a continuation of the grave ending from the first Pop Goes, being not even based in the restaurant, but instead being based in your house? Pop Goes Encore, a sequel to the original 2015 version of Pop Goes that was supposed to be a tower defense game, what the f***? Pop Goes Silent Night, an extension to the original 2015 version of Pop Goes, that's literally all we know. Pop Goes Reprinted, a cancelled hybrid project of a remake of Pop Goes and then another attempted Pop Goes sequel which was supposed to be a finale to the series. And finally, Pop Goes Finale, a cancelled compilation of three Pop Goes Reprinted minigames and to be a final send-off to the series. Until LSF Development, a main developer, just kind of vanished. <laughs> But you might be wondering, why didn't I talk about the story of any of these games? Why did I completely brush it off when talking about the original Pop Goes? In my past few videos, I've showcased the entire thing at a surface level because I'm far too lazy to do anything more than just that. Well, because in early 2020, Kane Carter uploaded a game job post announcing that he's rebooting the whole franchise. Every game up to this point is being entirely remade, including the lore. So, on the 1st of April 2020, Kane teased a remake of the first Popkiss Arcade game from 2016. And after a whole, like, two months of waiting, on the 12th of June 2020, it was released. And this marks the beginning of the redemption of Popkiss, because this is the masterpiece of Popkiss Arcade. 2020. With over 15 hours of gameplay, incredible visuals, and one of the best indie game OSTs ever composed, I went into this game completely blind, and I think it's safe to say that Pop Goes Arcade 2020 is almost perfect in every way. So, let's start at the first part of the game, the Dead Forest. The game opens in the garden, the main hub area of Popka's Arcade. You first have to head to the inn and talk to Sara. This is where you save your game and basically get told what to do and where to go. She tells you about how someone or something is draining the life of the surrounding forests. The North Forest has already fallen, but it's becoming a barren wasteland filled with hostile enemies. But, of course, it's been locked behind a gate that needs three keys. So, over the next two hours of gameplay, your main mission is to defeat three main bosses, Chica, Foxy, and Bonnie, by talking to the residents, upgrading your stats, and finding secrets hidden within forests. Now, the gameplay right now seems like just a walking simulator, right? Well, this is where the main gameplay loop of Pokers Arcade kicks in. This is the bare bones and simple yet amazing combat system. When you first start, you only have attack, block, and a few simple items available to you to your shop. But as the game progresses, you unlock special abilities like jumping over attacks, a powerful hook, and the ability to dig for a random item. Not to mention the sound effects that make each attack feel like an actual impact. Anyway, in each area, there's a variety of enemies growing in strength as you progress. When you first enter a new part of the forest, the enemies in there feel impossible to overcome, with each fight being a challenge, but as you progress, you can suddenly beat these enemies without using items and even one-shot them by the end of the game. After you've defeated each boss and collected all three keys, you can now enter the Dark Forest. Here, you have to fight Balloon Boy, and after you defeat him, you realize the gates are locked and you need three, you need, you need three more keys. But this time, something is different. The beams in the sky have grown stronger and the animals are rampant, with them having over double their initial health. Each boss you previously killed has risen from the dead, so it's your goal to defeat them again and shut down the beams in the sky and save each sector of the forest. So, you've finally made it. You've made it to the castle. But when exploring it, you might notice a loose brick in the wall.
If you then head to the fountain outside the dead forest, everything suddenly turns blood red and you now have a new objective. You now have to find six black rabbit parts scattered around the map and once you've collected them all, you need to head to the well in the site forest. Just like the original Pockets Arcade, you go through each FNAF 3 minigame until you encounter Bonnie. But this time, he doesn't reach out at you. This time, you need to not attack him. And slowly, the game will begin to break down. You are then sent back to the castle, where you can now fight the final boss of the mastermind behind it all. This is Dead King Freddy. I love this ending, it's so wholesome and it fits the game perfectly. And that's it, right? You've achieved 100% completion. Well, no, because on the 1st of July 2020, Popgo's Arcade was posted on Steam for $5 with an entire expansion that the developer says is the second half of the game. So this is Popgo's and the Machinist. I'm not going to go over this too much because it's basically Popgo's and the Dark Forest, but I'm better in every way with better combat, funnier dialogue, and so much more to explore. The game opens back up in the garden, but this time Minora, a receptionist at the inn, has gone missing, and it's your job to go into the mysterious hole that was left there and save Minora. But as you enter, a speaker descends from the ceiling. That is the machinist. He's built a complete underground cave system, even with cameras to monitor what you're doing. And in front of you are three keycards needed to push the minecart forward. So, you know what to do. This game is mostly about finding those keycards by defeating three bosses and eventually the Grand Machinist reveal. I think this is really well done, with multiple teasers on who the Machinist was. It kinda reminds me of the Avengers Endgame posters. Anyway, the Machinist, the final boss of Popgo's Arcade. When you get to the area, it's revealed to be Morse the Mole, a reference to an old Scrout Pocus 2016 animatronic. He basically has all the same attacks as you, but with a laser beam that slowly builds up with each dig. And once you've gotten him to low HP, he'll send out a prototype of Monora he was building and fully heal. And after you get his health down one more time, he'll finally be defeated. I love how in his final speech, it's almost like he is aware he's a scrapped concept. Could things have been different? And that is the final Pop Goes game before Evergreen. Burn my house to the ground! My family's dead! What do I do? So this is a thing. Released on the 3rd of April 2023, My Pop Goes is a Tamagotchi inspired teaser game for Evergreen. It opens up with you, aka Bonnie Glade, in an attic. Your father asks you to go retrieve a toolbox, but you stumble upon an old chest that conveniently was in the middle of the room glowing. You open it to find a Bonnie mask, a Chica plush, and oh my god, Freddy Fazbear but marketable. The real meat of the game is having to keep the tiny weasel's hunger, thirst, and music bars as high as possible. And if you don't he dies. After each day, they go down faster and faster, with day 5 actually being, um, too difficult. But after you beat it, it skips 15 years ahead. And this cutscene plays. My Pop Goes is the definition of a teaser game, but with amazing art, sound effects, and solid gameplay for a short 30 minute experience. Okay, that actually scared me. Alright, this is the big one. Revealed on the 1st of April 2020, Pop Goes Evergreen is the long anticipated remake of the first main Pop Goes game, shown to have completely remade gameplay, environments, and oh wow do the models look so much better. I mean the original ones weren't like 
awful, but this is a glow up. So far, we've gotten a lot of teasers, so I'll quickly go over everything we know so far, starting with the new models. Like I said, these look so much better, with each one having a more textured, less greasy design. Also, the environments have got a massive redesign, with incredible lighting and attention to detail, especially the office. But what if I told you that you could play a version of Evergreen right now? Because if you buy Pop Goes Arcade on Steam, completes the entire thing to 200%, you get this ending screen. In the Pop Goes Evergreen game job page, Kane says that the gameplay of Evergreen will be overhauled drastically, with a lot of replayability. Kane posts weekly game job updates, revealing things from animatronics to new merch, so I'll link that in the description if you want to keep up with the game's development. So to summarise it, Funny Weasel goes from greasy to less greasy, now go buy his merch, what the f-